Today, I want to share a message. That testimony is honestly incredible to set the stage for what I'm about to share and what I'm about to talk about because it's something that's really, uh, really strong on my heart. I, my background with health, for those who might know my testimony, I was into the new age, super into healing, super into the, honestly, a lot of demonic stuff, but there's some great stuff too in diet, like you saw with Octavio and so many other stories. But in sixth grade, I had my own health challenges. I had a very bad, the doctors didn't even know what it was, but condition where randomly throughout the day at school, wherever it was, just extreme pain in my like abdominal area, extreme pain, feeling super hot, like nauseous, didn't know what it was. And I needed to get to the bathroom within like five to 10 minutes or else the dam would break loose and not fun. You know, so it was like a lot of people suffer from this actually. And um, uh, in sixth grade, it was like, I had to call my mom. Hey, can you pick me up? Like this bout of whatever it was would just come upon me. So my mom was very concerned about this, very worried about this. And even me too, I remember... Uh, my cousin's high school graduation, I literally had to miss it because I'm like, I don't think there's bathrooms close by. Like it was that affecting my uh, affecting of my life. So we start seeing a doctor, we start going to these specialists, gastrointestinologists, you name it, specialist after specialist. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what the problem is. They don't have much advice either. They just kind of refer you to somebody else. Our last referral just ends up giving me Prilosec, heartburn medication over the counter, does nothing, doesn't even help me, doesn't tell me much after that. And we're kind of like, whoa, this, you know, this isn't helping. What is, what is the issue here? So I go years of my life, like kind of living through this, doing the best I can. My mom starts to kind of read about health, get into health. I'm in high school. And she's like, you know, hey, you need to start changing your diet. I'm going to start making this for you in your lunch instead of the other thing. And I'm, I'm stubborn. I'm, you know, a little high school kid. I'm like, no, I want to eat my cookies, Nutella banana sandwich, all that stuff. But she started changing my, my diet. And, and when I got to college is when I really decided, like, I can't live with this anymore. And I did exactly what Octavio did. I went on this whole foods diet, plant-based, uh, just like real foods, not like processed, fast food, artificial stuff. And my friends were like, dude, what are you doing, man? Come to Chick-fil-A with us. Like, come on. And I'm like, no, I'm going to make this smoothie bowl at home and some granola and, you know, try and eat this like veggie bowl thing, you know? And uh, what do you know after like a year of doing this or even less, no condition, no problems, hasn't affected me since. And throughout that time, I'm super into healing. I'm super into, you know, mental health and such. I'm like, the power of this, like how do more people not know about this? You know, like how do like, so many people are suffering? And I'm going to show you some statistics, how massive this is, but so many people are suffering from this. Why is it such hidden knowledge? You know, why are these doctors who treat this like gone after by big pharma legally and sued to bankruptcy? Like, why is this? So I got really passionate about it, studying to become a health coach, learned a lot. And I just want to share a little bit with you guys and how it connects to our service to the Lord as Christians. Because really, it might be physical, but we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Although it might be manifesting physically, Satan just has to go through evil people per se to manifest his will on earth. So a lot of the reason why this is happening is actually spiritual at its root. And us believers, we should be discerning about this. We should discern that clearly there's this massive epidemic of health, uh, unhealth and disease. God came to heal. Jesus came to heal the multitudes. He was healing people physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. He cares about our health. And the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth, all truth. So we as believers who know God, we should be a testimony to the world that, whoa, these guys are just so happy, joyous, peaceful, uh, righteous, and holy, good people. And they're in such good health. How? Like, they must know the Creator. Like, they're clearly embodying all that is truth. So first, I want to share with you the statistics. So you can see that this isn't just some normal thing that's happening the past 70 years. This is massive, and it's going exponential. This is a spiritual attack, and we know we're in the last days. Things are approaching. Satan's doing everything he can to weaken the body of Christ. And if you think it's not weakening the body of Christ, just ask the people who said, why didn't God heal me? I don't believe in God. 
They, they, they eat themselves unto illness, have no idea, and they say, why didn't you heal me? Why didn't you heal me, God? Clearly, he's not a healer. They end up losing their faith. And that's Satan's ultimate goal, to, to attack us, to lose our faith in Jesus Christ. But Proverbs talks about the, the, the one who is folly in his ways leads to destruction and then rages against the Lord. That, that foolishness in their ways, boom, then rage against the Lord. But so you can understand the health statistics around this. Cancer, half of women and a third of men will get in their lifetime. That's according to the British Journal of Cancer. This number was around 5% in the 1900s, early 1900s. It's now 50% and 33% will get cancer in their lifetime. Why? What's happening? You know, only in 100 years? More than 30% of all cancer deaths can be linked directly to diet. Directly to diet. Doctors have found. An even smaller percentage is actually hereditary or genetic. The rest is actually environmental, toxins, pollutions, things like that. About 10% is uh, genetic. Cancer is the number one disease children die from most now. So it used to be back in the day, a doctor would fly across the country to go visit a child who had cancer to study this patient, to help them, to learn about well, why is this happening. Now the children's hospitals are packed with children with leukemia, with cancer, who are dying far too young. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? Over 70% of all Americans are obese or overweight, according to the CDC. 50% of them are actually obese or severely obese. Yet, cal caloric intake has remained the same since 1999. But obesity has shot up 30%. So your weight problems you might be facing might not be, oh, you're just eating too much, you're glutton. It might be the quality of food you're eating. Caloric intake stayed the same. Obesity shot up 30%. It's the quality of what you put in your body, like the quality of gasoline you put in your car, or the oil changes you maintain your car with. It's the quality of what we fuel our body with. Children with autism has gone from 1 in 150 to two, in 2000 to 144 in 2018, just 18 years. And at the current rates, a third of all children will be diagnosed on the autism spectrum by 2050. A third of all children. Why are these rates skyrocketing? Heart disease is the number one killer in America. Sperm count is down 50% in the last 60 years, according to a 1992 study. And not just uh, the count, but the quality, which all impacts fertility. Fertility rate has been dropping massively. Now, this is all very sad to hear about, but what's even worse is that there's people who willingly don't care because there's billions of dollars to be made. Heart disease drugs make Big Pharma about $76 billion a year. That's mostly statins, blood thinners, things like that. You can't even actually eat grapefruits while you take statins. Because grapefruits has this natural compound, galactronic acid, which breaks up plaque in the arteries, buildups in the arteries. You can't take it with their product, though. So you got to buy their product. Um, 76 billion. Grapefruit, just go to the store. Um, diabetes, 29 billion. It's projected to be 80 billion by 2026. The cancer industry is worth 120 billion. The weight loss industry is worth 78 billion. Massive amounts of money are to be made. Now, there's been incredible advancements in modern science. There's been incredible advancements. You look at antibiotics, penicillin, these incredible discoveries, which are truly beneficial to humanity. But then there's other things that, hey, we could make a lot of money out of this if people just didn't realize this could also help them. You know, a grapefruit might not be the full cure, but it might help. Or, you know, a diet might help, but where's their money to be made in that? And we know that, the spirit of greed the Bible talks about is actually has a name. In Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters for either he'll hate one and love the other or else will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Other translations say money, but mammon is actually the name of a spirit of greed. Now people in very influential positions have mammon dictating things. As we are Christians, we, have, we are vessels of righteousness. We're instruments of righteousness for the Holy Spirit. Other people who don't have the Holy Spirit, they've got demonic spirits. We see them cast out here all the time. Think of a demonic spirit in somebody with massive influence and power. These demons are extremely intelligent. 
Do you think they're not polluting the food supply, trying to make us, you know, believers and even all people who are created in the image of God die from disease, unhealth, and destruction? That's their modus operandi. That's what they're doing. And we need to be aware as believers what this is doing to us because it's the Holy Spirit. Our body is actually just his temple. You know, it's not actually our body, the Bible tells us. Our body is considered to be his temple. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Are we submitting to God in our diets? Are we submitting to God in our lifestyles? Are we being led by the Holy Spirit into all truth? It's not our body per se. Like we have a house, we invest to make sure that house lasts a long time and maintenance, keeping it clean. We invest in that new car you buy. You're getting that oil change when you're supposed to. You're putting in maybe some premium gasoline, make sure that engine lasts longer. What are you doing with his temple? What are you doing with his temple that he wants to flow through to save souls, to win people, to bring his kingdom to earth, to truly be a vessel of righteousness, to truly be a minister for Christ, an ambassador for him? What are we doing with our bodies? Are we putting the same care into what we eat, into what we fuel our bodies with? Well, I believe we should. Now, it's important to note that food cannot defile us spiritually. The Bible's very clear about that. The, 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 the Judaic laws of strict dietary um, things that they had to follow was a big topic of conversation in the New Testament and the early church that their writers were aware of. And many of these verses are actually talking about food sacrifice to idols, food outside of the, the Torah's uh, commandments in Leviticus and such. Um, so it can't defile us spiritually. And that's what... Paul was trying to say when he was writing these that just because you eat something doesn't mean you become a worse person. But it doesn't mean that food, just because it can't defile us spiritually, can't destroy us physically. And it can destroy us physically, and we know that, and it is destroying us physically. But some people get very obsessed, they get hyper-focused about health, and their soul begins to, to wander away from what truly matters, which is Christ. Soul begins to wander away from true spiritual health. That doesn't mean we need to focus on this. We do need to focus on this. And people try to use this one verse to kind of discount healthy eating. I've seen Mark chapter seven. Um, it says, do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach. And it is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. Now, as I said, it doesn't defile us spiritually. It doesn't get into our heart. Maybe the plaque does into the arteries and it causes heart attacks, but... It doesn't get into our soul and actually defile us spiritually, but it limits our ability to serve God when we're getting tired after five waking hours at work. We can't look after, you know, your kids because you're just too weak. You're too tired. You need to take a nap or you're at the hospital every few months because there's something wrong and you're trying to change. You're trying to have a better diet. Well, God wants to empower you. God wants to empower you today. And you might be struggling with something or you might know somebody who's struggling with something very serious. And now, yes, God does heal. God still heals us today. He wants to heal us today. But that doesn't mean that there's no responsibility on our end. Just take a look at, read the book of Proverbs. Look at all the financial principles about work ethic, about working hard, how that is a blessing, how that, you know, that will be a financial blessing. Yet God could just superimpose money into your bank account. He can do, he can do anything. You know, he created all the laws of nature. All the law, he could, just like the, the, the coin and the fish that Peter fished for the taxes, he could do the same. But there's a mysterious about God, mysteriousness about God and there's an element of our responsibility that we need to take into consideration with our health as well. And if we look at actually the, the account of um, the woman with the flow of blood, for 12 years she was seeing physicians, seeing doctors who probably told her, hey, you need to change your diet. Hey, you need to take this. Hey, you need to do that. Yet she went to Christ, touched him, and his power healed her. 
going for a better diet, trying to do all these things, research a better diet, never replaces our need for God. Never replaces our need to seek him, to pray, Lord, heal me, fill me, make me whole, make me complete. It never, it never replaces that. But if we do look at when Paul was talking to Timothy, he said, hey, your, your frequent infirmities, your frequent illnesses, and for your stomach's sake, drink a little bit of wine. Now that wine, different than the wine we have today, but he wasn't saying, hey, you just need to have more faith, man. Like for your frequent infirmities, you should be praying more. What are you doing? God's the healer. No, he was saying you need to have a little bit of something to help treat that. And John in 3 John, when he was writing to Gaius in his third epistle, he said, dear friend, I hope all is well with you, is that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. It's clear in the scriptures, we're supposed to be as healthy in body as we are strong in spirit. Is the church aware of this massive attack against his temple, his, our bodies? You know, we need to be educated on this. We need to gain knowledge. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, moral knowledge of his law, but also knowledge of basic practical things in life because they matter. The, the, the nation of Israel, when he's saying this, they needed good military knowledge. They needed good blacksmithing and, you know, different aspects of governance, basic knowledge they needed. We as believers need to have the same knowledge. We need to apply that knowledge for his glory, all things to the glory of God. And I want to give you some practical steps. And if you're sitting here and you're like, yeah, I could be, I could be doing better. You know, it's his temple. I could be submitting way more in my dietary choices. Because a lot of the times when we eat unhealthy, it's built for like gustatory pleasure. It's all the flesh. It's all flavor. They put stuff in these, you know, in fast food, high fructose corn syrup. It literally makes you not feel full when you're supposed to be full. You don't register feeling full. Buy another, drive more profit, increase quarterly earnings. And people let this slide. If there's believers in these board meetings, like, no, 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 no. That is clearly not the right thing to do. Yeah, it could drive up our sales, but there needs to be morality. There needs to be, you know, a standard of, of righteousness in our company. Well, that hasn't been happening for a long time. And the love, of all, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. There's lobbyists in the government. They're affecting laws that get passed to then support big pharma, big ag, these chemicals that they put in the food supply that barely get passed with limited human testing. Decades later, they find, oh, whoa, it causes cancer. Shoot, we can't do that anymore. Yet they're kind of covering it up because it's, it brings a lot of money. But if the Holy Spirit's in charge, if the Holy Spirit gets into that place of influence, the rest changes. If there are believers who rise up in these companies and change these practices, millions of people who don't know this information, who don't know that, oh my gosh, my diet, it's the quality of food that's making me overweight or making me have these conditions. I didn't decide to change the quality. It just got changed on me but we can get informed. And I want to show you some practical steps. Number one, the most important step, this might seem obvious, start learning about true health. Because even if you literally just start learning about it. All you have to do is Google, go onto YouTube and say how to be healthy. Just start your, your search. There's a guy named Dosh, Dr. Josh Axe, who I know is a Christian, um, who has a good resource of information. I, I know a lot of others, but who I know is a Christian, Dr. Josh Axe, but literally just start, buy a book on how to be healthy. Buy a book on like the things that Octavio uh, listened to or read or how he got such healing. Like just start researching because if you get, if you start this today, if you're like, man, I feel convicted, I, I do need to get better in my health and you start for a few weeks, you might do great, but you won't know why you're doing what you're doing. You won't truly know the power of what you're doing. So Satan will come in, tell you all these lies. You won't have the truth to combat it. You won't have the truth to say, no, no, no. I'm not going to eat that because, yeah, it might feel, that, feel this way, but that literally causes this, that causes that. You start to learn about information that will literally get passed on to your kids. Passed on to the kids who don't have a decision on what they eat. They're giving it to them at their table. They might say, no, they might be a little picky, but you decide what they eat. They're in their developmental years. You should be fueling their body with what is clean and pure, and that'll get passed on to them. They'll pass it on to their kids. You'll have generations of health. And in the study of epigenetics has literally shown us that your decisions turns on and off different genes in your genetics, gets passed on. 
So your decisions in health, you can change. Like you can be a curse breaker physically in your genetics with the health that you pass on to your children. It's incredible. You get healthy now, you end up having a kid later, that kid inherits better genetics. That's how you can inherit worse genetics where you might be born with a disease. You might be born with a predispensity to breast cancer or other things. Turn on the good genes. Start making the decisions now. Learn about health. Gain this knowledge because it's valuable. Number two, eat whole foods and cut down massively on fast food. So whole foods is basically like, think of from seed to fruit or from seed to vegetable, like how God created it. Put it in the ground, grows, eat it. It wasn't until the flood did we start eating meat. You know, Adam and Eve, all of them, they were eating the herb bearing field of the uh, green of the field. Vegan, vegetarian, and it wasn't until the flood we started eating meat. But it doesn't mean meat is bad. It's only the meat that is raised extremely inhumane conditions now, living in their own fecal matter, inject with hormones to make their fat grow bigger and their muscles grow bigger and antibiotics because they're getting diseases on the foods that they're eating because the foods cost cheaper and all these different ways to commercialize the industry. Proverbs tells us that, that the godly care for their animals and the wicked actually treat them cruelly. A lot of people are vegan just because of the actual suffering animals go through. And obviously, you know, we are human beings. We have dominion over the earth. This isn't, but it's also, you know, you're supposed to have a heart for a living being. It's not equal to humans. Some vegans go, you know, pretty crazy about it. I, I went vegan for a year. I've been in the, the whole community. Some people are extremely militant about not eating meat. Just get clean meat. Just get meat that's actually grown up as it's meant to be, as God created, not living in these weird artificial commercialized systems which causes disease. And fast food buys the cheapest possible meat. The cheapest possible meat comes to the most, what I was just describing. But whole foods, this is how God designed it. This is how God designed food to be. You farm, you grow it, you eat it. The reason why so much of these statistics is happening is because the food has changed in the past 70 years. Since about World War II in the 50s, these companies started creating packaged foods. You walk into Fred Meyer, you walk into Yolks, Safeway, whatever, most of the store is packaged foods. Used to be most of the store, the market you go to in town is just everybody's fruits and vegetables, seeds, everything like that. You go home, maybe grind up some flour, bread, things like that. But there's no like artificial coloring and, you know, Sour Patch Kids. Like what even, what even is that? Or like Haichu, what even is that? It's like tasting like you're, you're eating plastic. I used to pound bags of those back in the day, but now it's like my mind has been renewed and I can see the, the spirit. But uh, seriously, a lot of these foods, it's like you need to have that mental renewal according to the truth. What is true food? How did God create it? Start asking these questions. You start doing this and you'll automatically improve your health. If you want to improve it more, number three, limit the amount of white flour and sugar intake. So the sugar that doesn't get used by the body for energy gets immediately converted into fat cells. Same with starches, very processed starches and sugars immediately converted into fat cells. And even white starches cause a lot of fatty liver disease, which is very, very common. But if you just cut out sugar, you'll cut out weight. It's very, very simple. Sugar is extremely addictive, more addictive than cocaine in studies on rats. And we love it. They put it in all of our food. You have to actually turn the box around and read the ingredient label Instead of just the marketed, look super healthy, look super awesome, like thing that they package it with, read the ingredient label, become literate in that. You'll see, you don't want to be fueling your body with these. You don't want to be building God's temple with these because literally every seven years, your body has an entirely new cells. So technically you're a physically new person every seven years. And if you're giving nutrients that your body needs, that your cells need to be at their optimal level of function, in seven years, you'll be at that optimal physical level of function. But the cells need certain minerals, nutrients, things that are deprived in fast foods, packaged foods, white flours, but are in the whole foods, are in those super potent juices with high nutrients, and you'll feel an effect. When I did this, I literally, you can ask my friends who are with me, seeing me on this journey, like, 
my mental performance increased, my cognition, like my memory, uh, ability to memorize things increased. And like, honestly, just my natural state of confidence. And a lot of it's related to the colon, which has millions of neurons, helps produce serotonin, the neurotransmitter that makes us happy. Um, you know, the Bible even says many things about the gut, the belly, the rivers of living water flow out of our belly, um, the Holy Spirit, and also the heart and the mind. But the gut is extremely important. And when you're eating these things, you're actually allowing your gut to live how it's meant to live. When you're eating sugars, starchy flours, processed foods, rancid things, it actually cakes up in the colon. A lot of these things that aren't meant to be digested, they don't get through you fully. They build up. They develop plaque. Most people have five to 10 pounds of a black tar substance caking the lining of their intestines and colon. And when you do a colonic or a colon cleanser, you eat like this, it starts coming out. And even if you eat healthy and you're juicing, if it's caking the walls of your intestine, you're not actually digesting those nutrients. It's not actually going through the intestines. But number four would be eat more fruit, start juicing fruits and vegetables. The thing about juicing is this, you're getting extremely potent nutrition extremely fast without having to eat massive quantities. So in one juice, you could have like 10 salads of just greens and kale. You look at like, if you've ever juiced before, you're like, where did all that stuff I just bought go? Like, this is way too expensive. You know, it's this little juice comes out, but you just bought two bags worth at the grocery store. All that's going into your cells. All that's going into your body. All that your body is using to become a better version of itself. Start doing that if you can. If you can't, start eating more fruit. Very cleansing, very uh, uh, revitalizing for the intestines, for the colon, um, which is for a lot of people, and even like me, which likely had irritable bowel syndrome. Some people have uh, a condition called uh, leaky gut, which is where there's literally holes in their intestines from the acidic nature of the food they're eating, from the toxic nature, there's holes. It's leaking out. I know multiple people with this. Look it up. It's becoming very common. When you treat the colon as it's meant to be treated, you get results. Number five, very simple, extremely powerful. Start walking or jogging regularly. There's, there's something... There's something honestly divine about just the motion of walking. God created us as we are, two legs, two hands, different than other creatures. The, the, the act of walking is very powerful for this reason. Most of the organs have a natural pumping motion. The heart pumps. The liver pumping, pumping blood through it, pumping bile, secreting toxins out of it. The kidneys pumping, filtrating. The colon even is pumping food as it digests it. There's a natural pumping motion. When you're sedentary at work or just lounging, watching TV all day, you're not moving, your body is not pumping the way it should. When you're walking, when you actually develop that exercise, you're not only burning calories, more fluids are flowing through. More fluids are having ease going through your body. More of your organs are actually pumping as they should be. Your whole health in increases. And people back in the day, they would jog from village to village. They'd walk into town. They'd walk miles a day. We're built to walk. If you can, develop a regular routine of walking or jogging if you can. Just walk, listen to a podcast instead of just uh, listening to it at the computer. Just pick up your phone, throw in some headphones and go walk as you listen to it. It'll develop this. Your health will improve massively. But if you want to go gung-ho on your health, if you want to go hardcore because something you need to address something quickly, and there probability is somebody is in here that has that or knows somebody who has that, there are two things I want to mention that you can do for massive improvement of your health if you're in that situation. One of them, fast. Water fast or juice fast. For some people, juice fast is better because you don't actually have any nutrients in your body. If your diet is already so uh, uh, lacking in those nutrients and minerals, you're kind of just starving it more, except when you give super potent nutrients and minerals to your body, and then you're not getting the calories. Your body doesn't have to digest as much because when you're eating, you're actually using energy to digest as well. And when you stop eating, it starts eating at the fat cells, eating at the different toxic waste in the body. The body has more energy to go into the liver, go into the kidneys. That's like some people on day three, most people, you're, you're peeing clear, you're drinking a lot of water, day three, boom, it's like dark brown. You're like, whoa, what the heck? 
And honestly, for a lot of people who have bad kidneys, this kind of like a sediment comes out because kidney stones, it's, it's built up sediment. And energy drinks, just Google energy drinks and kidneys and look at Google photos. It's, it's a real deal. A lot of it builds up in kidneys, but <clears throat> when you fast, it gets, it gets released. And even studies have shown that just a three-day fast increases human growth hormone levels by 300%. People take human growth hormones for like steroids purposes to get bigger, football, weightlifting, things like that. Your body naturally produces more of it when you fast. Your body naturally produces more stem cells. Stem cells, people are traveling to Panama to get injections for stem cells for tens of thousands of dollars because it's not legal here, but your body can naturally produce more, which goes into healing the rest of the body. A 10-day fast increases HGH 1,250%. USC studies have shown that mice who fast only a couple days a week live 30% longer. A 72-hour fast completely resets your immune system. So a lot of people have autoimmune diseases where their body's just attacking itself, things like that. When you get nutrition, when you fast, your immune system gets stronger. The next pandemic, pandemic that comes, you ain't going to be a victim of that. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be able to fight that disease, that pestilence coming at you. You'll be much, much stronger. And the second thing, oh, also, if you're like thinking about this and you're like, maybe I should fast, January, Hungry Jen, we're doing fasting. So join the, join the train. You got a community of people around you or in, in this. Uh, Pastor Vlad has a lot of great teachings on the spiritual benefits of fasting, which honestly are the most important, you know? So fasting, huge January if you're, if you're looking into it. The second would be colon cleansing. Like I said briefly about the colon, there are cleanses you can do. It's like when you get a colonoscopy after the age of 50, they're looking for colon cancer. They, they don't allow you to eat and you need to take this like laxative or colon cleanser because they need to get the stuff out. Well, there are colon cleanses you can do that actually get the stuff out. Get that black tar that is stuck out. Even parasites too, which actually live in that material, which a lot of people have. One square inch of sushi has like, I think hundreds of thousands or millions of little microscopic parasites they get killed by the stomach acid, a lot of them, but a lot of people have parasites. In my experience, my time in health, seeing people go through fasts, colon cleanses, actual parasite worms come out of their stool that they have. And it's those things eat at you. They eat at uh, what you're trying to eat. But um, the Cleveland Medical Center, even uh, the hospital has proven and shown that this plaque does develop, but there's a colon uh, cleanse that you can do if you're, if you're bold. It took me four years to develop the, the guts to do it. Uh, it's called an enema. I'm going to go on, not going to describe it right now. You can maybe Google it later um, and uh, see for your own if you want to. But I was doing different methods. I never wanted to do this. I was creeped out by it. And when I did, literally, I was on like day three of a juice fast. There's nothing, nothing in me, solid material in terms of food-wise. I did one enema, weighed myself before, weighed myself fully after. I lost 2.2 pounds of literal black substance that came out of me. My mind felt clearer when it left me. I, I felt way different. I felt incredible, honestly. And for so many other people, this is the case. When you get that out, then what you're eating, the nutrients actually get absorbed. So look into it. It's actually very, uh, the Gerson therapy, this woman who uh, helps treat people who do have cancer. And I knew a woman, uh, I knew a guy who was mentoring me as I was studying to become a health coach. Uh, he had a, a patient, a client who had breast cancer and the, the tumor was the size of like bigger than a golf ball. And after 21 day juice fast, 21 day water fast, and uh, I think six months on a plant-based diet, whole foods, just clean, good food, the tumor shrank to the size of a pea. And he was like elated at this, one of his first clients, like incredible uh, healing testimony. So many others too, so many others. But it threatens a large chunk of the billions of dollars to be made. 30% statistics show 30% of cancer is directly linked to diet. That's 30% of that profit to be made. There's no profit to be made in preventative healthcare, in telling you to eat better, in telling you to do these things, to go buy it with your own money. You're only paying for like their time or maybe, you know, just that, that counsel, that advice, instead of putting you on a drug that you need to take for the next 30 years of your life. 
You know, it's, 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 there are many ways to help align yourself with the way that God created our bodies, food, and creation as a whole. And in the end, it's not our physical health that really matters. Um, the Bible tells us that, you know, bodily exercise profits a little, a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Having promise of the life that is now and that which is to come. It's, it's not our physical health that we should be spending most of our time and energy seeking. It's our spiritual health. And some people do get obsessed with their physical health, way too obsessed. If Satan can get you physically healthy so he can insert some pride, maybe some vanity into you, hey, he'll do it. Because all he cares about is what lasts forever. That's your soul. Our bodies, when, we, when Christ returns, when we are resurrected, we get a glorified body. We, these are temporary tents, Paul talks about. These are temporary tents. Now we want them to operate function at the highest capacity possible to be most effective for God in every walk of life. But we're not meant to invest our entire mind and willpower and energy into that. We should be at the end of the day, not thinking about, oh, what did I eat fully? What did I say? Was I taming my tongue? What did I, what was I thinking? What was I doing? We should be analyzing our, our, the, the soul, our godliness, our righteousness, comparing it to Christ, because that's truly what lasts forever. And all of us will be judged according to his righteousness. And I see so many people, especially when I was in, people were obsessed with physical health and their heart was just not there. And there can be someone who eats, eats horribly, is in bad health physically, but they have the most beautiful heart. They have the most beautiful heart, warming heart. They love the Lord. And that's truly what matters the most. At the end of the day, if you're feeling like you want to do this, always just remember us as believers, it's godliness. It's following Christ. It's our righteousness in our pursuit of Christ that is what matters. And I just want us all to remember that because it's, it's very, very important. We who know the true nature of the, 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 the life, the life at, you know, at hand and the scriptures.